Listening test instructions. The listening test is about 50 minutes. There are six parts in listening test. You will have about six minutes to listen to each passage and answer the questions. The passage will be played once. Unfortunately, I missed the concert last night. You will hear a conversation in three sections. You will hear each section only once. After each section, you will hear two or three questions. You will hear the questions only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hey, Jamie, what are you doing here? I'm looking for an apartment to rent. Are you also looking for an apartment? Yes, since my parents' house is so far away, I need to find an apartment closer to school. So, what are you looking for? I am looking at different options to find the cheapest lodging. All I need is a place big enough for my bed, my desk, and my television. Of course, the place should have a kitchen so that I can cook my meals. I will be living on a very tight budget and will have to watch every dime. Me too. I cannot work full-time like I did during the summer. I will cut down on my workload in order to spend most of the time on my studies. So, a safe and decent apartment is all I need. Question 1. Why does the man need to find an apartment closer to his school? Question 2. What kind of apartment does the lady want to rent? How long have you been looking? I just started this week. Since school is going to start next month, I figured I better start the process as soon as possible. It's not easy to find an apartment to your liking that does not cost a lot. I have been looking at the ads in the newspaper for two weeks, and I still have not found anything yet. Really? Is it that difficult to find an apartment? No. It is just that everything I like so far is too expensive and way beyond my reach. Is it because they are very close to school? I heard that the closer they are to school, the higher the rental cost. Maybe that is the problem. Since I do not have a car, I need to find something close to school. Have you thought about sharing an apartment? If you want, we can find a two-bedroom apartment and share it. It may be cheaper that way. That could solve our problem. Maybe we should talk this over before we decide. Question 3. What kind of apartments has the lady found so far? Question 4. Why does the lady need a place close to school?
Question 5. What is John's solution to the high rental cost problem? Right. What do you do during the weekdays? I have to work at Starbucks from 8 o'clock a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m. And then I have school from 1 o'clock p.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. How about you? Well, I have classes from 8 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Do you plan to have your friends over at the apartment very often? No, not on weekdays. If my friends do stop by, it will probably be during the weekend. Same here. I also plan to visit my parents during the weekend. My parents' house is too far to visit once a week. I will go home during the holidays. It seems that sharing an apartment with you may work. Do you want to try it? Yes, sure. Question 6. Why is the lady planning to visit her family only during the holidays? Question 7. Do John and Gemini plan to have their friends over during the weekdays? Question 8. What is the man's schedule from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m.? You will hear a conversation followed by five questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hey, Anthony, guess what? What? Robert asked me to marry him. We're getting married. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. So, when is the big day? We haven't set the date exactly, but it looks like it will be sometime in July. How did he propose to you? On Valentine's Day, he got me a present. I thought it was an ordinary Valentine's Day present, but when I opened it, it was this big diamond ring. Right then, he got on his knees and proposed. That's so nice. So, you really got surprised? We talked about marriage a little, but I never knew he was serious. You are going to be busy with wedding plans, but you have several months to prepare for it. It's going to be pretty hectic for me, so I'm going to need some help. First of all, I was wondering if you would like to be my man of honor. I would be honored. So you're going to help me with the planning, right? Of course. How many bridesmaid are you going to have? Three. Let me guess. Susan, Tina, and Cindy. Close. I'm going to have Cindy as the candle lighter. The third bridesmaid is going to be Lydia. She is a good friend from church. I know her. She's sweet. I'll make sure we have the best wedding for you. I hope so. I appreciate your help. Question 1. How did Robert propose to Stephanie?
Question 2. How does the man feel about being chosen as man of honor? Question 3. How many people are mentioned as a bridesmaid? Question 4. When do they plan on getting married? Question 5. How does the lady getting married know Lydia? You will hear a conversation followed by six questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Everything all right, Carla? Yes. I just wanted to talk to you about the assignment that's due in on Monday. I can't give you an extension if that's what you want. No, it's not that. I wanted to ask you about the word limit. Well, 2,800 is the absolute maximum, I'd say. Okay, thanks. I'd, I'd better go. I've got a lot to do before Monday. Hang on, Carla. Have you heard about the Harvey Graduate Business Program? No, what is it? It's a special scheme funded by the Harvey Group. Okay. Well, they have a special program especially for graduates. They only take on three people a year. Each of the colleges in the state is invited to put forward a maximum of five students a year for consideration, the ones with really high grades. I wondered if you'd be interested in trying out for it. After all, you've been doing well in all your modules. Wow, it sounds like an honor to be considered. What does the program give you? Well, you get to work and train at the Harvey Group for a year, and then they will fund your master's course a year down the line. I'm right that you're interested in doing a master's course, aren't you? Yes, I was considering doing something management-based. Well, I think they will discuss with you what master's course would be best for you and them, depending on the department you're working in, so you may be obliged to do the course they want you to do. But it's bound to be useful. Then they employ you for another year, and after that, you can choose to stay with the company or move on somewhere else. What do I have to do to apply? Do I need a resume? Well, there's a rather lengthy application form to fill out, so I don't think a resume is needed. If you get through the first stage, you'll have to do a presentation. If they like you, they'll invite you back for an interview. Okay, I see. Well, if you're interested in the program, come to my office later on, and I'll give you the details. After four is best for me. Thanks. Question one. Why does Carlo want to talk with Professor? Question 2. The Harvey Graduate Business Program provides young people with
Question 3. Which one of these does Carla not need to do? Question 4. How many students can be recommended by each college for the program? Question 5. Will the students need to work with Harvey Group lifelong? Question 6. When can the students meet the professor to seek further details? You will hear a news item once. It is about 1.5 minutes long. Then five questions will appear. Choose the best way to complete each statement from the drop-down menu. Fatty food may feel like a friend during these troubled times, but new research suggests that eating just one meal high in saturated fat can hinder our ability to concentrate. Not great news for people whose diets have gone south while they're working at home during the COVID-19 pandemic. The study compared how 51 women performed on a test of their attention after they ate either a meal high in saturated fat or the same meal made with sunflower oil, which is high in unsaturated fat. Their performance on the test was worse after eating the high saturated fat meal than after they ate the meal containing a healthier fat signaling a link between that fatty food and the brain. The loss of focus after a single meal was eye-opening for the researchers. They noted that the meal made with sunflower oil, while low in saturated fat, still contained a lot of dietary fat. Since both meals were high fat and potentially problematic, the high saturated fat meal's cognitive effect could be even greater if it were compared to a lower fat meal. After eating the meal high in saturated fat, all of the participating women were, on average, 11% less able to detect target stimuli in the attention assessment. Their response times were more erratic, and they were less able to sustain their attention during the 10-minute test. Though the study didn't determine what was going on in the brain, research has suggested that food high in saturated fat can drive up inflammation throughout the body and possibly the brain.
You will listen to a two minutes video. Then eight questions appear. Choose the best way to answer each question. Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about insomnia. Insomnia means that you can't sleep. Our participants today are Nung, Minja, and Alan. Before we start, I want to say that insomnia is important because how we sleep affects our health, our studies, and our relationships. So um, let's hear from everyone. We'll start with no. Okay. I think stress is one of the major cause of insomnia. Just imagine that you just got out of a fight with your girlfriend or boyfriend. You could be overwhelmed by feelings and emotions. Because of that, it can be hard for you to fall asleep, which leads to insomnia. What do you think? I think that's a great point. Our relationships with other people and other causes of stress definitely contribute to insomnia. Mincha, what do you think? Uh, well, I definitely agree with Noon, and I think another cause, another major cause of insomnia is that drinking a lot of um, caffeine can cause insomnia too. You know, um, such as drinking too much tea or coffee. Um, <clears throat> because if you drink a lot of caffeine, the caffeine then will make your blood um, go faster in your body and it will make you feel very energetic and you cannot fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. I think I experience this problem daily. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've talked about stress and caffeine. Alan, what's your opinion? Well, I agree with Nung and Mitra that um, stress is a big factor, especially, you know, if you're in a relationship and Caffeine is another big factor. Um, I used to have that problem myself with drinking coffee. Um, but I want to talk about another major cause, which is your surroundings. I think that um, outside noises, pets, and people can really affect your ability to sleep. So um, outside noises, that might be something like traffic, lots of cars and trucks outside your window. Um, sometimes if you have a pet, the pet wants food or wants to go outside, so you always need to get up in the middle of the night. And finally, sometimes loud people, like a loud neighbor or a loud roommate, can really keep you up at night with all the noise that they make, like in the kitchen especially. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So overall, the surroundings are a huge cause of insomnia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we heard about surroundings and caffeine and stress, and I think these are all important causes of insomnia. So thank you very much to my participants today, and thank you to the audience.
you will hear a report once. It is about three minutes long. Then six questions will appear. Choose the best way to answer each question from the drop-down menu. One of Britain's leading scientists has urged people to take vitamin D supplements, particularly children who spend an hour less outside than they did 10 years ago. The geneticist Steve Jones told an audience in Wales, I never thought I would be a person who would take vitamin supplements. I always thought it was absolute nonsense. It's homeopathy. I now take vitamin D every day, he said. Today, because I knew the sun wasn't going to shine, I took an extra one. Children today spend an hour a day less outside than they did 10 years ago. That's the smartphone and the tablet situation. Scottish children spend less in the sun than any other children in the world. He said the bone disease rickets, which doctors thought they had eliminated from Britain in the 1950s, was a real issue today. Rickets is coming back, and rickets is coming back at some speed because of a shift in human behavior which we never thought would happen, he said. Another scientist, Arnold Matthew, said the benefits of sunshine and vitamin D could be felt across a range of health areas, including obesity, mood, and blood pressure. He noticed that Scotland gets the least sunshine in the UK, and Scottish men have a life expectancy two years less than men in England and Wales. Scotland is still the sick man of Europe. The Scots are the palest people in the world. And that's because their entire body systems are crying out for vitamin D. Jones told the audience that vitamin D had many unexpected effects on the body, including the immune system. It can help tackle infectious disease. It changes mood. If you have a shortage, you're more likely to get kidney disease. The sun also lowers your blood pressure. If you lie out on the beach in your bare essentials for an hour, you will drop your blood pressure by about 10 points because it relaxes your blood vessels. So get sun while we still can. Matthew acknowledged that too much sun can cause skin cancer, a discovery made in the 1930s during research on the health of U.S. Navy sailors. It was also discovered that they had lower levels of other diseases because of their greater exposure to the sun.